Hi, I'm Daphne Richards and this is Augie. Our question this week is why do leaves on trees come out at different times? A good question that I receive often, especially in times when the weather is off a bit, at least compared to weather that we might be used to. Although we no doubt have many tropical species in our landscapes, most of our trees are native to the temperate climatic zone, which means that their growth cycle is tied to our spring, summer, autumn, winter cycles. In the temperate climatic zone, Simply, our summers are very hot compared to our winters. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in the fall in response to the arrival of cooler temps and shorter days. In the spring, when temps are warming up and days are getting longer, that's a signal to deciduous plants that better weather is ahead, and it's time to wake up. Their tender leaves, if they had them year-round, would be susceptible to frost damage if kept all winter, so the plants go to sleep and wait for better times. Well, if spring weather arrives earlier than usual, trees and plants will be tricked and may think that it's time to wake up. The warm days that we tend to have during winter now often throw a kink into our temperate zone plants' natural cycles, causing them to wake up earlier than usual. Also, many plants require a certain number of hours of cumulative cold during the winter before they will wake up in the spring. Our stone fruits, such as peaches and plums, as well as trees that form spring flowers before they form spring leaves fall into this category. Our plant this week is Sandback Jasmine, a lovely little tropical shrub with wonderfully fragrant white flowers that are typical of the jasmine species that are common in the south. Listed hardy only to zone 9 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit, Sandback Jasmine is truly tropical and will be killed in harsh winters. Although we haven't yet had time to confirm, I fear that our Sandback Jasmine was lost in the recent 17 degree nights that it received in our demonstration garden. But even if you have to replant every few years, sandbag jasmine is well worth the effort. It will do best if protected from the harshest late afternoon sun, but needs bright light to grow and flower well. In filtered shade, it will stay a little smaller and have few flowers, but it's still quite lovely. Loose soil with a little compost is best, and in ideal conditions, sandbag jasmine will get up to six feet tall and four feet wide. When it's healthy and happy, Sandback jasmine will be covered in fragrant white blooms from spring all the way through fall and will remain evergreen through winter, unless it gets frost damage. Water frequently during the hottest, driest times of summer, but be careful not to overwater, especially if your soil is heavy and not well draining. Our viewer picture comes from Helen Quinn and Brian. Dale and Judy Schaefer, fellow members of the A&M Garden Club, grabbed this fantastic shot of a moth on a datura plant. And from Pat Clendenin in Georgetown, who got a surprise when her Passalon cactus finally bloomed. She did a little research and found out that it's a starfish cactus, also called the carrion plant. And yes, Pat confirmed, the flower smells terrible, but the bloom is fun to watch unfold. We'd love to hear from you, so check out klru.org to send us your questions, pictures, and videos.